in the opening greeting of his first letter to Timothy, Paul describes himself as an apostle of Christ Jesus by command of God our Saviour and of Jesus Christ our hope. There's also a passage in Hebrews 6 that speaks about entering the Holy of Holies, the presence of God. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. From these texts, the concept of certain hope entered Christian thinking. It seems counterintuitive. Surely the whole thing about hope is that it isn't certain because it hasn't happened yet. There's an outcome we hope for, but it might not happen. Certain hope, the basis for absolute trust, is how we express the rock-solid reliability of Jesus. The Campfire Church, our small and informal faith community, set up to offer encouragement during the Covid lockdown, has on the cover picture of its main page the words Certain hope in uncertain times. A light left on in the porch. Church on the way. Because Jesus is our living hope, offering us a hope that is certain, part of our calling as his followers is to be a sign of hope for other people. Help them keep hope alive. We are called to be a light left on in the porch to show the way home, a sign of hope that there even is somewhere to come home to and that they have not been forgotten. I encourage you to take a few minutes at some point to watch the very funny and affectionate video of the abbot of Plum Village's Upper Hamlet, Brother Fap Hu, talking about the great Buddhist teacher Thich Nhat Hanh. It's in among our afternoon activities and I'll make an extra post linking you to it at the end of our time together as well. He spent a while as Thich Nhat Hanh's personal assistant. He calls him Thai, which means teacher, and he said the quality he most admired in Thai was that no matter what happened, he steadily radiated the sense that everything was going to be okay. Thich Nhat Hanh was Vietnamese and first came to prominence because of his peace activism during the Vietnam War. He wrote this poem called For Warmth. I hold my face in my two hands. No, I am not crying. I hold my face in my two hands to keep the loneliness warm. Two hands protecting. Two hands nourishing. Two hands preventing my soul from leaving me in anger. So the sense that everything would be okay that he radiated was not rooted in external circumstances but was rooted in faithful spiritual practice and discipline. He held his light steady and so he became a source of hope and comfort and reassurance to others, no matter what was going on around him. In times of turbulence and uncertainty, they could look at Ty and feel that everything was going to be okay. 
You see the same quality in Julian of Norwich, whose words, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well, still find us and comfort us and lift us up. And Julian was an anchoress, and the calling of an anchorite was to anchor the light in and to the particular place where he or she lived. It is, to my mind, one of the loveliest aspects of our calling as people of faith to recall others to the certain hope that no matter what happens around us or to us, everything is going to be okay. It's the light we leave on in the porch, the reminder of home.